This video series is meant for students who are studying pre-calculus using Collingwood's pre-calculus textbook. Um, this text is the University of Washington's Math 120 textbook. And what we'll be doing in this series is walking through the chapters and working the examples that are in the chapter reading. I want to make clear that watching these videos is not an alternative to reading the chapter. These videos do not include all of the details in the chapter. They are simply meant as an aid in your reading assignments. Being able to read math textbooks is in and of itself an important skill to gain. So I would encourage you before watching these videos to see how you do going through and just reading the chapter. If you get to an example that you're having trouble working through, then feel free to consult this video in order to make that a little bit clearer. But do keep in mind that in addition to learning the actual math content of this course, we're also learning to gain the skills that will allow us to succeed in future courses. So in particular, in addition to learning the math, we do also need to learn how to read math textbooks. So without further ado, let's dive into chapter one and see what we find. So the very first problem in chapter one asks us to consider a marathon runner who, after the first mile, has clocked in at 18 feet per second. And the question is, if the marathon runner kept up this pace of 18 feet per second, how long would it take to run the 26.2 miles? So there's a couple of key ideas floating around here. The first is this equation, which I hope is familiar. We have that the distance is distance traveled is equal to the rate or the speed times the time traveled. So we know the rate of 18 feet per second and we know the distance of 26.2 miles. Uh, you might think that all we need to do is simply divide the distance by the rate and we're done. And in some sense you're right. But the most important idea in this first chapter that Collingwood covers is the idea of paying really close attention to the units involved in your problem. Let's see what would happen if we tried that approach. So I've written here 26.2 miles over 18 feet per second. When we're working with units, we should really think of them in some sense as behaving like fractions, in particular in the sense of canceling out. So if the denominator here was written in terms of miles per second, then we would essentially have miles over miles per second, and we would find that these miles would cancel out, our seconds would end up in the numerator, and our answer would be in units of seconds. But as we've written it here, we actually have this computing to give some kind of strange units called miles seconds per feet. So rather than taking this approach, we need to start by converting either this number or this number into units that agree with the other. Let's convert miles into feet. So, how do we convert from miles to feet? Well, we know that there's 5,280 feet in one mile. Our method for converting between different units is going to be by multiplying by a conversion factor. What do I mean by a conversion factor? I mean essentially we're just multiplying by one, but we write one in a particular way to make our units change a little bit. So 26.2 miles times 1 is equal to my miles cancel, and I can see how many feet this is. I'll write it underneath. Eh, let me grab a calculator and actually do the computation. So now that I've rewritten my total distance in terms of feet, uh, I can proceed just using my formula that distance equals rate times time. So I have my total distance over my rate, my feet will cancel, 
and I just need to do the division in order to find the total number of seconds. So I have a solution in terms of seconds, although when I look at this number, uh, 7,685 seconds, I have a little bit of trouble making sense of what this number means. I might rather give an answer in terms of hours or minutes. So let's grab this number, 7,685.3 seconds. Um, I think I'll ignore the 0.3 seconds and just consider this 7,685 seconds. And I'd like to convert this into hours. So again, I'm going to multiply by a conversion factor. One hour is equal to 3,600 seconds, so this conversion factor is equal to one. But I find my seconds cancel, and I can now express the number of hours involved. And I find that this solution is 2.13 hours. Now, if I wanted to, I could grab this 0.13 hours and say, ooh, maybe I'd rather express that in terms of minutes. Um, I could say that this is two hours, and I could apply a conversion factor to this 0.13 hours in order to convert it into minutes. Um, I'm going to end this example here and say that it would take 2.13 hours to run this marathon at 18 feet per second.